All right, Trev. This is an ongoing debate whether we still need the old school networking skills or not in the cloud. You know, old school networking skills like switching and routing. This is still cut into the cloud. And seriously, is knowing Cisco still a secret weapon in the AWS realm? It's a it's a great question. And I, I think this, this question comes up a lot from like folks that are early in their career, like trying to figure out what to do, or, or folks that were like me that have been doing networking for a while and are are thinking like, hey, am I gonna be relevant? Like, can I continue to um be successful in my career with the skill set? You know, my my take is you know, networking is obviously changing, right? It's changed a lot in the last decade. Networking skills, however, are, are still very much in demand. What what occurs is um, so yeah, like we have the data centers where everybody was configuring routers and switches, right? Um, now a lot of things are being launched in the cloud and and those same fundamentals, right? Yeah, maybe you're not configuring Cisco switches in a, in a in in, S- in XOS, uh, but you're still configuring routes, you're still subnetting, um, you're peering BGP to to make sure that your networks are reliable. So no, that 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 knowledge is always going to be valuable. And there, I think there's particularly like the message I like to send is. If you're passionate about networking, there is a place for you in cloud and in tech today. Just at another example, like if you're if, even if you're worried that hey, you know, cloud networking maybe it doesn't require the same staffing that you, like running a data center network might have caused. Think about this: uh, within cloud networking, there's more subspecialties of networking, like Kubernetes networking. Now, uh, I see a lot of companies hiring uh, network specialists. To, to do network AI workloads and, and training AI models, which is like a whole other like high performance networking space. So um, my short answer is no. Um, is knowing Cisco like a superpower in cloud? You know, I, I think I think really what Cisco did really well and continues to do well is in their certifications teach network fundamentals, right? Not just CLI in, in Cisco land, but routing protocols, um, like IP addressing the fundamentals. I think that that knowledge is is hopefully never going out of style, but it's definitely going to be relevant for at least another another decade. Right. Interesting. Because I know many cloud engineers whose background is uh, VMware or server in general and uh, programmers, right? There's There are many developers or application developers who switch in specializing cloud. But you know, it's a bit strange, at least for me, why there are only few network engineers shifting to cloud career? You know, it is that is a great question. I honestly wonder the same sometimes. Um, a, a few things come to mind for me. I, I I think the reason that that's the case is that there maybe not are as many direct, um, like traditional network engineers moving into cloud engineering. It, I think it kind of has to do with the role. Of a network engineer traditionally, so if you if we think about like pre cloud networking, we're we're talking data centers here. Even in my experience, even the most talented, um, intelligent, experienced network engineers in the data center, they didn't often think about the applications that were right. running in that data center. They right. were speeds, feeds, moving data around, um, and. The cloud kind of flipped that on its head. Like even as a networker in the cloud, like you you have to be application aware. You have to you you. It requires a, a better understanding of kind of the the full system, and so I think there you could argue there's a slight disadvantage um, being a network engineer versus maybe like a sysadmin or a v, VMware admin because those people are much closer to the the applications and the developers. You know. Yeah, I totally agree because. As a network engineer, you have many specialization, enterprise, data center, service provider, and even uh, voice and video, which is collaboration. We're going to talk about that later. But I notice that the old school or traditional network engineer is more on CLIs. Okay, Here are the enterprise or service provider network engineers and not much involved in handling or working with servers. Okay. With the exception of the, the data center track, where Nexus communicating to servers use Cisco UCS, yep. 
uh, VMware um, workloads, etc. I think that is the barrier. If you are an old school network engineer, oh, you are no way gonna touch the server application and the database. It's different mm -hmm. in cloud, correct? Yeah, I mean, even I can just speak from my personal experience. Like, I don't think I would have been as well positioned to enter the cloud arena and working at AWS if I didn't have that kind of middle point in my career that I spent at VMware. Because when I was a, a pure kind of Cisco network engineer, it was great. It was awesome. I was learning about TCP IP and, and all of these beautiful protocols. But that time at VMware is what exposed me to server administration. I started to script a little bit, working with developers more. And so, yeah, uh, I, I agree 100%. I think it can be helpful. Now, I, I don't want to dissuade uh, people that might be network engineers today that are listening, though, because there are, I think, more and more opportunities to get involved in those type of um, workloads and projects in networking. Uh, one great thing about cloud that is permeating the industry is... Um, it, it, it helps reduce the kind of silos that exist within job roles because everything is much more tightly uh, connected in, in like a cloud platform. Uh, and so uh, don't don't worry. If, if, if you're the CCIE digging into uh, routing, switching and, and packets and, and you're, you're running the Wireshark, that's cool. Like there's still, I think, a place and a path to get here, even if you, know, you don't have the opportunity to go work at VMware or I guess Broadcom now for five years. <laughs> Right, cool. How about, aside from routing and switching, how about other appliances and solution? Let's move on network security, such as load balancers or application load balancers. What else? Firewalls or next generation firewalls. Uh, are these skills still the cool kids oh. in the cloud playground? Oh, uh, 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 I, I, yes, a thousand percent. Yes, it's, it's so essential. And wh where I would kind of break this off for everybody is like, in the cloud, um, one unique thing about the cloud versus like enterprise networking is every type of business builds in the cloud. Um, where traditional network engineers and traditional networking uh, technologies like these firewalls and stuff, those were actually really consolidated in enterprise, really large, large companies. So as these companies are building in the cloud, moving to the cloud, they, they expect and uh, so oftentimes legally require actually for, through regulation the same level or a heightened level of security that they have in on-premise. So yeah, if you are digging deep into like, like a great example that comes to mind for me is like Palo Alto um, firewalls. That is a skill set where almost every enterprise customer that I've spoke with is leveraging their Palo Alto firewalls in the cloud, the hmm. same the same kind of OS, the same system as on-prem. Is it a little different? Sure. There's an architectural change so that it can scale horizontally. We're not stuck with active standby firewall pairs as much anymore but that's it's it's the exact same skill set of locking down networks doing deep packet inspection um securing things and load balancers are the same i could say the same for like f5 to elastic load balancers right if you have that expertise in like layer seven uh, or like application layer networking there's so many ways to apply that in cloud from load balancing to service meshes to cloud front and, and cdn like yeah. there's just a, a lot of opportunity yeah, I totally agree. And for those who are network engineers who doesn't know how cloud networking works versus the traditional networking, in traditional networking, we always look at ports, not just look, configure ports, right? Ethernet one, Ethernet two, etc. There's no such not there's not such such thing in the cloud, right? You don't. Yeah, I mean ports. it's. Yeah, it's like it's just you have a virtual ethernet card and then this magical thing called a VPC. And inside of that, there's these magical things called subnets uh, oftentimes. And yeah, like it, it, it just kind of works. You, you you configure the IP space. There's no, which is, which is, I think a good thing in a lot of sense, because frankly, I spent the first two years of my career configuring a lot of layer two stuff. It was a lot mm. of ports and particularly I was in the, the military. So it was port security and it was just constant, like resetting, adding VLANs to ports, trunking new VLANs throughout networks. And, like, and that was that was fun the first couple of times I did it. But you once you learn that stuff, it becomes kind of a headache. It's it's really kind of this undifferentiated part of the job. So I, I would I would offer up to network engineers. It's actually kind of freeing <laughs> to be in the cloud where you don't have to worry about some of these maybe more um, like like lower level aspects of it's configuring a VLAN layer on a one port. and layer yeah. two. Uh issues.
That's it. Exactly. Yes.